Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. It's oh, Friday. You're wearing your special shirt for me. I'm wearing the shirt that you like. I heard you <laughs> liked it. Other people like it too. Yeah, I know, but you like it. That's the important thing. Where'd it come thing. from? And can, do they have more? I got it somewhere and I don't know. Why? Do you want me to wear more shirts like this? I think that you should wear fewer shirts like this. I like, this is my Views shirt. John, yeah. there's a lot going on right now. <sighs> can I tell you about a few of the things that are going on? Yes. Number one, we're collecting Nerdfighter art for the Project for Awesome. Yes. So check that out. Number two, Link in the doobie -doo. we're looking for folks to submit applications for the Vlog Brothers sponsorship, which yes. we do. Half of our money goes to help out newer educational creators right. on various platforms. Right. As long as you're doing stuff on the internet, doesn't right. matter where. Yeah. He went way down. This is a little guy. I'm right where I belong. Number three, you were in the New York Times. I was. And also it said the word nerd fighters in the subhead. Yeah, it was cool to see the word nerd fighters in the New York Times. The title of the article was, Can John Green Make You Care About Tuberculosis? Or something like that. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. That is the goal. Time to put my book on your face. Number four? Yeah. You may be the second most banned author in America. It's me! Did that news come out yet? I don't know. I interviewed an astronaut? I heard about that. For study hall? Yeah. I found out so much, including that I do not work very hard. There, well, not compared to astronauts, no. <laughs> there was one last thing that I hadn't oh, mentioned. Great. We got an election in six days? Yeah, and it just is, it's very hard to think about anything other than the election. And it's also very hard to think about it. It's both of those things are hard. Yes. Like thinking about it is awful. Yes. But very hard to not do anyway. And I also have this, like, a hard time thinking that I don't matter. This is what Catherine said. She's like, well, I can't, like, fix that. I can't yeah. do anything about that. So, like, I, I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to focus on what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm like, but maybe I can. No, you can't. I want people to vote. And I have been doing my de my best on that front. So Hank, let me submit that actually while things are pretty stressful right now, I'm not going to minimize that. What's actually happening is that you, in particular, are experiencing intense anxiety for the first time in your life. Like pathological clinical anxiety. I think that there might be a pathological component to it. And yeah. you've never experienced that before, really. Yeah. And it's easy to forget this, but you had cancer, like recently. Like you just got better from cancer. And on the other side of that, it's really, really common to have intense anxiety. You know, elections are always very scary, especially the last couple. And so it's hard for me to know. I do know that it's different for me now, generally. This is probably, you're probably gonna tell me that I'm, I'm being silly here. But I don't think you're being silly. I think this is a very consequential presidential election. There's also a piece of me that just feels like I can't keep up anymore. There's so much going on. Like things are changing very fast in America politically. There's like, I, I, I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on how like the sort of media landscape had changed, which yeah. has been very fast and very weird and very big and important. Adding generative AI on top of that makes me feel so behind all of the time. But that's okay, And also man. I'm like older. Yeah. I feel like part of the thing that I, I do is try and understand media well enough to like surf along with it, commentate on it, yeah. and be like some whatever respected voice trying to have thought like useful thoughts about it. I feel so lost now. I feel like, to some extent, my job has been to at least like be able to read the ocean well enough to surf the wave. You've always wanted to surf the wave. And which I've, I, I've I actually, enjoyed but, surfing the waves. Yeah, but not you always. You surf with me. I would know for sure. Sometimes the wave slams you into the reef. You're addicted well, to wave riding. Well, it's where I, it's, the, it's like where I feel like I, I found my identity. Like I've, so much of my identity is tied up in that. Really? I also feel that I, like as a, a person who helps to run complexly and who's trying to make Good Store continue to grow and cares about Nerdfighteria, I feel like un being able to sort of witness and understand the landscape is valuable to all of those things. A little bit, but, but Nerdfighteria I, And I feel like I'm losing it. No. I feel like it's falling through my fingers. Like, but, I just, it's so complicated. But Nerdfighteria isn't falling through your fingers. Nerdfighteria isn't, yeah. like, becoming weaker because of generative AI. I just don't believe that. And, like, maybe it will in five years or whatever, but right now right. I would argue that Nerdfighteria is actually stronger and I more think... interesting than it's ever been. Yeah. I agree. I and think that's that... what's cool about our work. It's not like analyzing chat GPT. Ultimately, I don't think that's going to impact Nerdfighteria that much, which is what I find most interesting about our work. Right. I hear that. Independent of that, I have to tell you, while we're having a psychotherapy session, I think you're doing a really good job. I have a very hard time believing any of that. I know. It just doesn't penetrate. Um, it's like yeah. you have like armor on. There is a piece of this that is like, I wish that I could understand what, like, I could see what's coming better, and I just feel like right now I don't. In a, and and like maybe that's 
always been the case. Like, I certainly didn't see the pandemic coming. Right. So, like... But it's uncomfortable to you to feel like something's coming and you don't know what it is and you yeah, don't understand it. That and, feels it might, like, and it might crash you into the that, roof. That's definitely like a six days out from an election and a media has been already f completely flipped over and is about to get flipped over again by, you know, autonomous agents who can create on their own. I'm going to tell you what I actually think, which is that some of this is about worrying about generative AI. And some of this is about grappling for the first time with your mortality, with the fact that you are going to have a different, that you're going to have a different level of health anxiety in the future. You're trying to view through the lens of the universal something that is intensely personal. I mostly imagine myself through how I'm imagining other people are seeing me. To see ourselves as others see us, as Joyce put it. Yeah, that's mostly how I see myself. Oh, and interesting. I feel like a lot of people see me, whether they're people who I actually know, people who work for one of the companies, people who are on the internet, yeah. uh, on Twitter, on TikTok. And I've gotten a little bit better there at this, just realizing that I, I don't know whether I'm a good person without that validation, like that feedback from Really? Me. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's not good mm -hmm. because that is always fickle. And when that goes, like if you have a Tumblr 2013 incident, you're going to be left pretty hollow. Yeah. Whereas if you can build it from within, you can say, okay, my core relationships are okay. The people who know me and love me the best still know me and love me the best. And I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue to try to do good in the world, not so that it will be observed, but because it's fulfilling and it allows me to make connections to people and, and, and there's value in the work itself. I just have a harder time trusting myself than I about that stuff than I do trusting other people. Well, I'm, I'm on a journey of meaning. Yeah. I think I'm figuring it out more. You know what'll happen, Hank? There will be something that emerges that, that you and I find interesting. The way in 2005, when the social internet was just emerging, there was something we found interesting yeah. in co community-based video. Mm -hmm. There will be something that emerges that we find interesting that we use it for. Yeah. And it'll be different from what most people use it for. We'll find a lot of fulfillment in that. Right. That's my guess. I think I, you're probably right about that. It's going to be really interesting. <laughs> and that's actually like a thing that I found when I was sick. That if I could be interested, then I was doing okay. Because that's not really even internal or like self-validating or about identity or status or right. anything. It's just like, ooh, curious. If you can get into a rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, tuberculosis has been the great gift of my life for the last four years because it's given me something to think about at night when otherwise I would be thinking about my, my worries and fears. I'm thinking about what we can and can't do in the face of this terrible scourge. Yeah. And I've, I had, I, on that topic, like, just because you mentioned the New York Times video, I, and since we're here and we're being sincere and everything, I just have to say how grateful I am to everybody who's, like, followed me on that journey and, like, been yeah. like, oh, yeah, you're right, it is, a, this does, is this does matter. Is. Yeah. There's lots of things to care about, and I don't labor under the delusion that the thing I care about is the most important one. Yeah. But I think it's important. And yeah. I think ultimately, like, you know, each of us can only care about so many important things, right? Like... There's always going to be problems that in, in, in paying attention to problem X, you're ignoring problem Y. And that's something that I really, really struggle with. But I think ultimately right. we have to, you know, we have to pick and we have to, you, you gave me the advice years ago, like when you pick something, go deep. Yeah. Going deep, you, you can do more You have to trust good. other people will go deep elsewhere. Right. Because otherwise you're always surface everywhere and that just is the saddest place. Where you only know about the problems and you don't know why they exist. Or how they get or, better. Or how they're getting better. Yeah. yeah. That's like the despair place for me. And I kind of yeah. can't afford to stay there very long. John, I'm surrounded by, speaking of, just lots of pieces of paper with your name on them. About 19,000 out there. How many more do you need to do? 81,000. All right, you're on your way. Yeah. The last time I talked to you were like at 12,000 and I was like, that sounds miserable. I don't mind. I'm enjoying myself. Okay. I change Sharpie colors every 10,000. So and that, that people really keeps will know, it fresh. So that people will know about when their copy was signed. Oh. And that does keep it fresh. <laughs> I can't tell you when I was, because I'm actually past 20,000. When I was getting toward 20,000 and I knew I was going to get to switch colors, I was like, let's go, baby. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. It's not normal. Please. Okay. That was fun. Did I come on too strong? No, I don't think so. If you want to submit art for Project for Awesome, or maybe tell someone to apply for the Vlogbrothers grant. Both of those informations are down there, as well as the link to John's article in the New York Times. And a link to pre-order my new book. Oh yeah, I'll do that too.